down today. Here's the first one. First property of exponents. And that's when I have the same base. And you guys are familiar with this guy. Please notice I have the same base here and a multiplication problem. I have two factors, they have the same base. What do I do with those exponents? You know, I add them together. Now that's possibly confusing to you because uh, probably every time you've had a multiplication problem with a two and a three, you've got a six somewhere. But here I am ending up with a five. But go back to your definition of positive integer exponents. X to the second power just means two X is multiplied, right? X to the third power just means three X is multiplied. There's my X squared, there's my X to the third. Uh, we have a shortcut way of saying 5x is multiplied. We say that's x to the fifth. That's your first property of exponents. It deals with factors that have the same base. Notice this. I can have more than one uh, variable in these expressions. And you're probably aware that I can move factors around, change the order of things that I'm multiplying when I'm multiplying. That's called the commutative property. And so I could think of this as, I don't have to write it down, but I could think of this as A times A the fourth, and B the third times B the fourth. I can think of it in essence as two different problems, this one and that one. Three and four, obviously B the seventh, a to the what? That's right. There is an understood one there. So one plus four is five. A is the same as A to the first. If you think uh, you're looking at a factor in which there is no exponent, you're not. If you're looking at a factor in which there may not be a visible exponent, but if there is no visible exponent, there's always an understood exponent of one. Now, some of you guys may want to actually put in the one just to make sure you don't forget that you're adding a one to a four, four, eight again. All right, first property of exponents. Let's take the second property of exponents. Gonna look a whole lot like the first one, but notice the distinction. That yeah, looks a lot alike, right? But it's different. This is what we're gonna call a power to a power. It just means an exponent raised to another exponent. And you probably know what's going to happen here. When I have a power to a power, I multiply my exponents. And you have a whole section, I think it's 7R2, that deals with powers to powers. We're going to be looking at some of those examples at the end. In fact, let's look at a couple of them right now, and then we'll look at some more detailed ones uh, a little bit later on. an example of powers to a power. Now here's an instance in which I really might want to seriously consider adding the invisible exponents. That's 2 to the first power. That's x to the first power. Why would I add those exponents? Well, because I'm going to be multiplying the, the 3, the outer exponent, 
by each of the inner exponents. If something's not visible, you might be tempted not to multiply it. No problem here. 2 to the 3 times 1 is 3. x to the 3 times 1 is 3. y to the 3 times 2 is 6. And I typically don't leave something as simple as 2 to the 3rd. Unsimplified, it's 8x3, y6. Powers to a power. When I have powers to a power, I multiply my exponents. All right, one more property of exponents. This deals with a fractional circumstance. When I have, in fact, the same base, the same base in a ratio, fraction. Notice, same base. Again, got the same base, got the same base in multiplication, I add, we're not surprised if I have the same base in division, a problem, I subtract. So this is going to be x to the 6 minus 2, you probably wouldn't put that step in, you just do it ahead, it's x to the and notice I always subtract the smaller exponent from the larger exponent wherever the larger exponent happens to be. This one happens to be in the numerator, the top of the fraction, right? That's not always the case. Uh, look at this instance. And you'd be asked to simplify this. And you say, well, I basically have two problems. I have to think about the A's together, and I have to think about the B's together. When it comes to the A's, the larger exponent is in the denominator. So I will subtract the smaller exponent from the larger wherever the larger is. That's in the denominator. So it's going to be 5 minus 3. Why are we subtracting the denominator? Because the larger exponent's in the denominator. Hey, check out your b's. The exponent with the, the larger number is in the numerator. That's where I'm going to do my subtraction. So b is going to be 8 minus 5. So I get b to the third over a squared. So you're not always subtracting in the numerator. You're subtracting wherever the exponent is larger. That's my third property of exponents. Deals with a ratio, fraction. Now these properties of exponents apply to positive integers. Zero is a, I'm sorry, positive exponents. Zero is an exponent. Negative exponents and a little bit later on to fractional exponents. These are consistent and apply to all those instances. Well, we've talked about positive integer exponents. Let's look now at zero as an exponent. And this is one of those uh, instances in which your calculator can always help you out if you happen to forget what something to the zero power is. You probably won't, but if you do, you can actually put 2 to the 0 power into your calculator, and it will tell you that, what do you know, 2 to the 0 power is 1. In fact, 14.7 to the 0 power is 1. Negative 38 to the 0 power is 1. Pi over 11 to the 0 power is 1. Are you getting an idea here? Uh, just about anything. Integers, decimals, fractions, irrational numbers, negative numbers, any real number. 
zero power 